good evening to today's speaker, Professor Koki Takanasi. Uh, good afternoon to friends in other Asian countries and in India. And good morning, friends from Europe. Uh, there are a few today. Very nice to see. I'm very delighted uh, to welcome Professor Koki Takanasi to this uh, webinar series. Uh, many thanks on behalf of my team, uh, my co government of Rajbhushan Singh, uh, my other team members, Kuspendra Sakti, and others. And I'm really happy that uh, we could have host you in this webinar series, which is going pretty well, I would say, since more than a, a year. And I just see Professor Hirohata is also here. Great to see you. So uh, I think Professor Takanasi does not need any formal introduction. Uh, he's very well known in our community, but nevertheless, I would like to read a few lines, uh, at least uh, particularly for the benefit of the young students who may not know him very well. So Professor Takanasi received his uh, BS, MS, and PhD degrees in physics from the University of Tokyo. Then he joined the faculty at the Institute for Material Research, very popularly known as IMA, at Tohoku University in Sendai in Japan, and uh, has been a professor since 2000. In 1994 to 1995, he was an Alexander Humboldt Fellow at the Forsen Center of Mulis in Germany. He served as the director of IMA uh, for about six years, uh, between 2014 to 2020 and as a vice president at Tohoku University between 2018 to 2020. Uh, and I think IMR celebrated its 100 years recently, and that was during his directorship, and it was a remarkable event. I congratulate him for that. He has published over 400 papers and has received numerous awards, including the Outstanding Research Award 2004 by Magnetic Society of Japan, Outstanding Paper Award uh, 2009 by Japan Society of Applied Physics, Mazumoto, Hakaru Award in 2011 by Japan Institute of Metals, Prize for Science and Technology of the Commendation by the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports and Science and Technology in 2018, that's known as MEXT, and MSJ Society Award 2019 by Magnetic Society of Japan. Professor Takanashi was the leader of a national project in Japan uh, that's called Creation and Control of Spin Current between 2007 and 2011. He was also a distinguished lecturer of the IEEE Magnetic Society for the year 2013 and the president of Magnetic Society of Japan uh, between 2017 to 2019. And also acted as the president of the Asian Union of His research interests include magnetism and magnetotransport in nanostructures, magnetic materials for spin chronics and spin current phenomena. So with this uh, very brief introduction about Professor Takanasi, I again welcome all of you. And I just like to mention that during the lecture, we don't take questions. In case you have any question, you can just raise hand or write in the chat box that you have a question. Or if you have microphone issue, you can also write your question and I will read it at the end. So with all this, I now hand over the podium to you, Koki, and it's all yours. Kindly start your lecture. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, kind of introduction. Okay, so, can you hear me? Okay, no problem. No problem. Please continue. Okay, yeah. And so, I like, share the slide. Okay? Yes, please see the slide. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Bedanta. So, uh, I'm Koki Takanashi with uh, this, this slide. Okay, uh, I'm Koki Takanashi with Institute for Materials Research. And I'm now also the director of the Center for Spintronics Research Network, Tohoku University. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, particularly Professor Svankar Bedanta, uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to make a talk so at this webinar. I really appreciate the organizer efforts to, to continue so this excellent webinar series, uh, more than one year. Okay. So today, so I will talk about metallic superlattices. Okay. The title is Symmetric Superlattices Revisited. Okay. okay, so this is the outline of my talk. So first, uh, I would like to make brief introduction to metallic superlattices. So including the history and advantages uh, in, the, in the present, so in the recent progress of spintronics. Okay. 
And so we're uh, uh, now, so our group uh, works on metric supervarices from the viewpoint of recent progress of spintronics, uh, such as so spin orbitronics and uh, antiferromagnetic spintronics and spin carotronics. So we're uh, I'd like to show some results. So for each topic. Okay, so this is a list of collaborators. Okay, so uh, this is a list of rabble members. So in my group, and so uh, particularly, so okay, so associate professor uh, Takeshi Seki uh, has made uh, uh, so significant contributions to all the topics uh, in the in the uh, in today's uh, for the work in today's presentation, okay. and. Uh, Yon Chan Lao, so for for so for for the work so in spin, spin orbitronics and PhD student uh, Hiroto Masuda uh, for anti ferromagnetic spintronics. Okay. And so well, uh, this is the list of outside collaborators. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have more, much more collaborators generally. So Professor Wanger Beranta is of course uh, one of good collaborators. So. Uh, but uh, okay, the people shown here are the collaborators for the work in today's presentation. Uh, Dr. Zhang Wang, so he was in Tokyo University, uh, but he uh, he had just moved to AIST in Nagoya, so he had made a uh, contribution to, to the work for spin electronics. And so uh, Professor Shirai's group in REAC, that is another institute in Tokyo University, and Dr. Junichi Ieda, JAEA, so, so for collaborate for, for theoretical support. And uh, Dr. Uchida's group and uh, Dr. Sakuraba's group in NIMUS uh, collaborate for, for spin carotronics. Okay, so our group uh, works on materials uh, for magnetics, particularly, so spin tronics. And especially, so we are interested in so all other alloys or so intermetallic compounds. And uh, for example, uh, hoisted alloys with high spin polarization and L1 ordered alloys or related materials uh, showing high magnetic anisotropy. Recently, we are also interested in nitrides uh, showing uh, several functionalities. And also uh, intermittent compounds with uh, local uh, structural symmetry breaking. So that's uh, very interesting for spin orbitronics. But today, so where I'm going to talk about metallic superassets. So recently, we are also interested in metallic superassets. So I'd like to show the details more. Okay. So, what is metallic superassets first? Uh, metal superlattice is a material consisting of different metal layers uh, alternating periodically in nanometer scale, as shown here. The study of metallic superlattices uh, started uh, around the end of 1970s. And then, so where the metallic superlattices were extensively and actively studied in 1980s and the 1990s, and some important properties were discovered. One of them was a perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, okay, uh, uh, induced by interface magnetic anisotropy. So perpendicular magnetization in metallic superlattices uh, was first reported uh, in 1985, so cobalt palladium superlattice. And since then, where uh, 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 perpendicular magnetization was uh, observed in a lot of, lot of uh, combinations of uh, magnetic and non-magnetic uh, metal layers. And further, so where uh, very important discoveries are uh, interlayer exchange coupling and giant magneto resistance. So the first observed in ion chromium superlattice. 
And so in 1986, uh, antiferromagnetic exchange coupling between iron through chromium was first reported by Professor Peter Grimberg. And then, where in 1988, so giant magnetic resistance was reported uh, by, by Professor Albert Fertz. And also uh, uh, by Peter Grimberg in 1989. Okay. Okay. So, as you may know, where uh, uh, iron chromium super lattice shows uh, anti filament coupling, anti filament magnetic alignment at zero external field. And uh, in this state, uh, resistance is very high. But where when external field is applied and uh, 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 iron movements are uh, Aligned in parallel, then resistance is reduced drastically. Okay. This is giant magnet resistance, and giant magnet resistance was uh, used uh, for, for uh, read head in hard disk drives. And the discoverers, uh, uh, Professor Peter Grunberg and Professor Albert Feld, were awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 2009, uh, 2000, sorry, 2007. And so these discoveries in metallic superaxis uh, provided uh, the basis uh, for spin trunks research afterwards. However, the study of metallic superaxis, metallic superaxis itself, so has lost uh, much attention, so as a material. Okay, th this is some digression. Okay? So where, uh, uh, as uh, Professor Sivankar introduced, where I was in, in uh, Fortune Centrum Uli in Germany, so as an Alexander von Kumburg research fellow. And I made a collaborative research work with Professor Peter Grunberg. And since then, so we had a uh, close relationship uh, officially and also uh, personally. So Professor Grunberg kindly invited me to, to the Nobel Prize ceremony and the related events in Stockholm in December 2007. So these pictures were taken there. So I was I was very happy and so I enjoyed and I had I, I had so very valuable experiences there. So I I, I thank deeply so Professor Peter Grunberg. However, so unfortunately Professor Peter Grunberg so passed away uh, three years ago in 2018. So I miss him, I feel sad. But on the other hand, where well, Professor Albert Feld is still very active and he, he made a talk, uh, this uh, webinar uh, in June, I think. So well, uh, very, very great. And so I admire him. Okay, so then back to the science. Uh, I believe, so metallic super uh, okay. So, uh, uh, sorry, so uh, spintronics so has uh, dramatically developed uh, in 21st century. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, since the discovery of GMR. And uh, in the last decade, uh, decade uh, new fields uh, have emerged so from spintronics. So, such as uh, spin orbitronics. Uh, making full use of spin orbit interaction, uh, such as spin hole effect and lash effect. And so, uh, magnetization control by spin orbit torque is a very important topic. And uh, anti ferromagnetic spin tronics uh, using uh, the advantage of anti ferromagnetic materials. And further, spin carotronics. That is the interplay between charge, spin, and heat. And so for, for these uh, recent developments of spin tronics, so metallic super axis are very useful and advantageous, I agree. So because uh, metallic super axis is an assembly of interfaces. And so our uh, spin orbit interaction, so where uh, is uh, uh, remarkably enhanced at interfaces. So uh, metal super axis uh, so uh, has a merit so for, for the study of spin orbitronics. 
And so using metallic superlattice, we can control magnetic structure. So by using so anti ferromagnetic magnetically coupled uh, superlattice, uh, we can control uh, the coupling strengths and the magnetic period for, for uh, anti ferromagnetic order. So this, this is very so useful and advantageous for, for anti ferromagnetic spin triangles. And so where a metallic superlattice is a material with structure and isotropy in nanometer scale. That suggests so we can control where so where we can control thermal conductivity and electric conductivity so independently. So that could be very useful for, for spin calorie times. So for, uh, uh, I think where a metallic superlattice should be revisited. Uh, from the viewpoint of uh, modern development of spin trials. So that's why we, we work on so metallic super uh, again, uh, again now. Okay, so, and I will show uh, some recent results. So for each topic, so spin optronics, anti phenomenal spin tronics, and spin electronics. And first, spin optronics. So for spin optronics, we are interested in uh, the relationship uh, between spin orbital and interface magnetic anisotropy. These two both originate uh, from spin orbital interaction, but the, the relationship between these two uh, is not so simple. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, 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 we prepared uh, this kind of super lattice. Uh, so where uh, with a uh, ferromagnetic layer sandwiched by a uh, non-magnetic layer. And then where a uh, perpendicular magnetic anisotropy is induced. And it's well known that perpendicular anisotropy decreases with the thickness. Then spin orbital. So how does spin orbital change? So we are interested in this, this relationship, so yeah. We are, in, we are investigating this, okay. And so, where uh, this, this study was made mainly by uh, assistant professor, so Dr. Leon Chen Lao, okay. So uh, we prepared uh, two types of uh, structures. So two types of metal superacid, so, yeah, as shown here. Yeah, okay, so we made, so cobalt palladium of uh, cobalt platinum systems, but where this is a sim, uh, this is symmetric structure, and this is a symmetric structure. So symmetric structure, so we prepared uh, platinum cobalt platinum or palladium cobalt palladium. That is uh, uh, the cobalt sandwiched by the same uh, normal metal. On the other hand, so for asymmetric structure, uh, platinum cobalt palladium a palladium cobalt platinum. Okay, so a cobalt sandwiched by different metal layers. Okay. And so, uh, in in such cases, so uh, uh, perpendicular anisotropy is induced uh, by by interface magnetic anisotropy. And so, where this is well known formula, so where uh, 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 anisotropy, total magnetic anisotropy is the addition of uh, volume anisotropy and uh, uh, interface anisotropy. But please note here, so where uh, uh, we distinguish where uh, 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 okay, top interface, so uh, upper interface and lower interface, we distinguish now here. But where, uh, uh, yeah, this case, Okay, so uh, for a sim uh, symmetric structure, but in a, a symmetric structure recently, so where additional term uh, is proposed. Okay. So that is a Rashiver uh, type anisotropy contribution uh, that is induced by broken uh, inversion symmetry. And so uh, this Rashiba type, uh, okay, so uh, uh, anisotropy, so always promotes perpendicular magnetic anisotropy. But how uh, can we evaluate, so this type, uh, so where this additional Rashiba type anisotropy? Uh, 
So this is uh, Yon Chan's other idea. So we have measured uh, magnetic anisotropy for uh, a symmetric structure and the symmetric structure both. And uh, the difference between uh, anisotropies, magnetic anisotropy energies uh, for a symmetric structure and a symmetric structure uh, gives uh, Rashberg type uh, anisotropy. So we can evaluate by, by measuring anisotropy energies for asymmetric and symmetric structure. Uh, yeah, then so volume anisotropy and the interface anisotropy is uh, uh, canceled out by subtraction. And we can evaluate. And uh, regarding SOT, regarding spin orbit torque, symmetric structure where SOT disappears, should disappear. And where uh, asymmetric uh, structure, so we can uh, expect so uh, the spin orbit torque, the appearance of spin orbit torque, and spin orbit torque uh, uh, was evaluated so for asymmetric structure uh, using harmonic cold voltage measurements. And then, so I'd like to show the results. The first, magnetic uh, anisotropy, okay, perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, okay. Then, so this is uh, 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 an isotropy energy per area as a function of uh, layer thickness, cobalt layer thickness. And uh, red, red circles show uh, the results for asymmetric structure. And uh, black, uh, 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 black squares uh, show uh, the results for or symmetric uh, structure. Then we can clearly see so a uh, systematic difference, okay? And this difference uh, increases with a decrease in current layer thickness. Then we can evaluate. So okay, so we consider so this difference uh, as a, a Rashberg type uh, anisotropy, and so this this plot is a Rashberg type anisotropy uh, evaluated from this data. Uh, as a function of cobalt layer thickness. Then, so Russia type uh, anisotropy uh, decreases drastically the thickness. So that's reasonable, I think. But well, according to, to, to the so well, theoretical consideration, uh, analytical model, so well, uh, gives uh, Russia uh, anisotropy should be proportional to, to uh, cobalt layer thickness minus uh, six. So uh, experimental results shows uh, some slower decay uh, with the thickness, uh, slower, than, slower than the theoretical expectation. So uh, we, we consider, so it's caused by, so the uh, yeah, possible origin for this discrepancy is uh, so uh, intermixing uh, at the interfaces. But while we are now uh, are making some more uh, detailed calculations in collaboration with the theoretician. Okay, and then so I'd like to show uh, the results for spin orbit torque in so uh, asymmetric structure. So using uh, how many core measurements. Okay. And so where well, this is a damping torque, uh, damping like torque, uh, so the function of cobalt layer thickness, and this is field like torque. Okay. Uh, Then you can see where a dumping like torque uh, shows almost constant. So dependence is very small, but almost constant uh, as a function of cobalt layer thickness. On the other hand, field like torque decreases. The magnitude of field like torque decreases with cobalt layer thickness. So this suggests where a dumping like torque and field like torque uh, have. Uh, uh, completely different origin. Okay. And so our uh, field like torque seems to show uh, some similar behavior so to, to Rashiva and isotropy, so decrease with uh, cobalt layer thickness. And so we plot, so here, uh, field like torque uh, as a function of uh, an isotropy field. Uh, so with a correction of uh, uh, shape anisotropy, so demand metallic distribution. Okay, so then uh, you can see 
so very good correlation, so linear relationship uh, between field life torque and uh, an isotope, not an isotope. Okay, okay so uh, this is the results for phosphine orthotronics in cobalt, oh, sorry, uh, cobalt palladium and cobalt platinum system. Okay, then, so I'd like to uh, move on to the next topic, that is anti-ferromagnetic spintronics. So for anti-ferromagnetic spintronics, uh, 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 we are interested in magnetization switching or magnetization dynamics uh, in uh, anti-ferromagnetic coupling uh, uh, super lattice, as shown here. And so the uh, magnetization switching and dynamics induced by spin orbit torque uh, from a uh, non magnet interlayer. So, but where, uh, uh, before doing this, uh, we have tried to find uh, the material for non magnet interlayer that shows large anti ferromagnetic coupling and also large spin orbit torque. So, where uh, as a good uh, non magnet space. And so we paid attention, we have paid attention to copper iridium alloy, as shown here, because well, copper and iridium, as you may know, so copper and iridium are well known to show uh, large anti ferromagnet coupling. However, uh, copper and iridium show, uh, so spin hole effects. So copper almost zero and uh, iridium are very small. On the other hand, the copper iridium alloy was uh, reported show a uh, large uh, spin hole effect by Professor Tiny Group so about 10 years ago. Okay, so uh, we have examined first where the exchange coupling behavior, so for, by, by, uh, for, uh, for, for the metallic superatus using copper iridium alloy. Okay, this is the result. So, uh, okay, this study was uh, made mainly by a PhD student, uh, Hiroki Masuda, okay. And he made, so cobalt, copper iridium cobalt super lattice. And then, so where uh, we can see some coupling behavior, okay, as shown here. And so this is uh, extended coupling strings, uh, variated from the magnetization proof, saturation field, as a function of, uh, uh, Layer thickness. So this is the result for copper iridium. Uh, okay, in this case, but uh, uh, concentration of iridium is five hundred percent. Okay, then exchange coupling strength is uh, smaller than that of iridium or copper. However, we can see definitely so exchange coupling and uh, the first peak uh, of uh, antiferromagnetic coupling for copper iridium. So copper iridium shows definitely antiferromagnetic coupling. And also we have measured uh, spin hole effects for this sample uh, using so spin hole, uh, sorry, so how many hole uh, voltage measurements. And so spin hole angle was evaluated to be about 3%. So that is, that, that is consistent with the previous study reported by so Nimi, so Professor Otani's group. So what uh, we have found, so copper iridium alloy uh, is a uh, uh, promising material uh, that shows uh, considerably large anti coupling and also large spin hole effect. And furthermore, uh, we have investigated spin hole effects in, in so wide range of compositions for copper iridium. So in the equilibrium phase diagram, uh, the solubility limit for copper in iridium or uh, for iridium in copper uh, is uh, very much limited, very small sorry, uh, yeah, solubility limit. Okay. However, by using sputtering, uh, we can make uh, uh, non equilibrium solid solutions for copper iridium alloy in the, in the in all the compositions uh, of uh, copper iridium. And so we have made 
uh, the sample with uh, composition gradients uh, using combinatorial uh, technique. And so what we have got uh, information of spin hole effects uh, by using uh, thermal evasion due to spin parity effect. So in collaboration with Professor Uchida group. And so this is the result. So the gray curve, this gray curve uh, shows uh, the magnitude of thermal signals uh, due to spin parity effect. That is proportional to spin core effects. Okay. So then we can see it's uh, here. So peak around uh, 25 atomic percent of area. Okay, so where uh, we can expect the maximum of spin hole effects uh, is obtained around this, this concentration. So where uh, we have prepared separately, uh, so the sample with uh, concentration 25 atomic percent of iridium, and uh, we have measured uh, spin hole magnitude resistance SMR and also how many core measurement and uh, the spin hole angle was evaluated. Uh, it was evaluated to be uh, about 6%, so 6.3%. So a very large spin power angle was uh, obtained. So in this uh, non equilibrium region, non equilibrium composition for, for copper iridium alone. Okay, so where are copper iridium, uh, I think were uh, so promising materials. So as spin hole, spin hole material and showing uh, antiparamount copper. And so we also, we have also measured uh, the temperature dependence of spin uh, hole effect. Uh, so for copper iridium, in this case, the concentration of iridium 24 atomic percent. And then where a spin hole conductivity shows uh, small dependence, but where a very, so where a, so almost constant value as a function of temperature. So where a, this, this suggests uh, the mechanism of a spin hole effect is a side jump or uh, intrinsic mechanism. Okay, so this is the result for, for uh, anti spin chronics. And so I'd like to move on to the final topic that is uh, metallic superlattices in spin calorie And so where there are several, so where are some electric phenomena so in, in spin current trials, but particularly we are interested in anomalous neurons effect. So anomalous neurons effect is a, a well-known so thermoelectric phenomena in magnetic materials. So that, that has been well-known so since long time ago. So as shown in this view graph, uh, when a temperature gradient is applied to magnetic material, then uh, electric field is induced uh, in the direction of vector product of magnetization and temperature gradient. Okay, that is uh, anomalous learned effect. And the voltage, in this voltage is proportional to, to uh, temperature gradient. And so this proportional coefficient is called uh, Nernst coefficient or transverse direct uh, civic question. Okay. And uh, for the, uh, to, to describe the performance of some electric device, uh, dimensionless figure of merit ZT is often used. So as shown here, so and ZT is proportional to, to electric conductivity sigma and some electric coefficient S. And in this case, where uh, uh, in the case of negative effects where uh, uh, Nearest coefficient here as a square of okay, some electric coefficient and inversely proportional to the uh, summer conductivity copper. And the advantage of Nerens, anomalous Nernst effect is a uh, large, larger efficiency uh, can be expected uh, compared to. to, to, to uh, usual civic device. So when when uh, ZT is larger, okay. So when uh, in, a, in a large uh, ZT region, uh, efficiency for learning device uh, is expected to be larger than that of uh, civic device. However, 
program is where for anomalous Nernst effect, where uh, in the present status, where uh, Nernst question is it's very small. And uh, therefore, so consequently, uh, ZT is very, very small, too small for practical application. So that is an essential problem. So where well, I think where well, uh, metal super axis is advantageous to enhance, uh, to improve the ZT. So this is a concept here. Uh, yeah, metal super axis here. And so uh, temperature gradients is applied to, to uh, the out of plane direction, this direction. Okay. And if the magnetization is Located in plane, or oh, sorry for this, this is Chinese character, this is magnetization. Okay, magnetization is uh, okay, so in plane, uh, then uh, due to anomalous Nernst effect, uh, so this, so in plane direction, this direction, uh, so electric field is uh, induced and we can measure electric voltage. So this, yeah. then, well, uh, uh, because of layered structure, uh, so interface scattering or something, where uh, we may reduce uh, thermal conductivity in the out of plane direction. However, electric current is here in plane direction. So, where uh, electric conductivity in the in, the in plane direction, we can keep high conductivity. So, where uh, uh, we can control thermal conductivity and electric conductivity independently by using the structural. Uh, uh, an isotropy of metal superatics. So uh, uh, that leads to improvement of ZT. And also, where uh, we can expect the enhancement of anomalous Nernst effect itself uh, in metallic superatics. So actually, uh, so where, uh, previously, uh, we reported the enhancement of anomalous Nernst effect, Nernst coefficient, uh, in, in ion based uh, metal super artist. So that is multi-layers in nanometer scale. Uh, so in progression with which that group as shown here. Then we, are, uh, we have, uh, we observed the remarkable enhancement of the balanced coefficient, multi-layer. Okay. So remarkable enhancement compared to, to, to that of bar. So, well, I think where well, metallic super axis is uh, useful uh, uh, for spin current drying. So we can we can find we, we can expect the uh, where uh, uh, material from metallic super axis showing large anomalous Nernst effect and also small thermal conductivity, the keeping a uh, high electric conductivity, and uh, that leads to, to the improvement of ZT. Then well, we, we have made a rough estimate of ZT for metallic super axis. Okay. So ZT is uh, described as shown here, as I mentioned. Uh, and so sigma and so kappa, so different direction, you know, where, uh, yeah, so uh, because of anomalous Nernst effect. Okay. And then this is the data for usual uh, magnetic metals. Okay. The thermal uh, conductivity kappa is of the order of 10 to, to uh, 10 to the second uh, watt per meter per kelvin. And the electric conductivity uh, of the order of 10 to the sixth or 10 to the seventh uh, demands per meter. And so uh, anomalous uh, neurons coefficient is, is in many materials, uh, this is very small, so less than one microvolt. But in some uh, some materials recently were uh, 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 considerably large uh, questions uh, were reported. So uh, some materials more than one microvolt uh, per Kelvin and 10 microvolt, uh, not, not, not yet reached, but where, uh, I think where uh, some, some material may reach were about 10 microvolt per Kelvin. Then using these parameters, uh, we can expect ZT, but uh, well, well so this is very small. So uh, well, 10, minus, uh, 10 to the minus six to, to 10 to the minus third. Okay. On the other hand, the metallic super axis, this is a uh, expected value, but where uh, uh, we may reduce uh, thermal conductivity in the out of plane direction. We may reduce to, to so where uh, one, what per meter per curve uh, by tuning 
So optimizing so this uh, layer structure. Yeah. And so electric conductivity are about the same. We, we can keep 10 to the sixth, 10 to the seventh. And S is also where uh, enhanced expect, where expectation. So where, uh, about 10 times uh, enhancement, then we're uh, 10 to the uh, to, to 10 to the second, so we're 100 microvolt per kelvin. So this is too optimistic, but okay. Yeah, then using this this uh, parameters, these parameters, GT is expected to be uh, 10 to the minus second to to one. Okay. Well, one is too optimistic, uh, but well, uh, I think well, uh, we can we can improve. So uh, we can increase our GT to about 10 to the minus second or some more. I need. So this is some expectation. Okay. Uh, well, but, but this is the final target. So of our study, but now in the present status, uh, we just investigate anomalous nearest effect in several uh, metallic super lattices. And I will show some results. And so nickel platinum super lattice, recently we have investigated. And so, well, 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 as I mentioned, where uh, Takesh Seki so made us uh, Significant contributions for, for all the topics, but where uh, particularly for this topic, where uh, Takeshi Seki is responsible for this. And so, where he prepared uh, nickel platinum super as shown here, and well, so showing well defined uh, layer structure. And we have obtained a perpendicular uh, uh, magnetization. Uh, so, uh, induced by strain, magnetic elastic energy. So, and so we measured anomalous Nernst effect. I skipped the details, and this is a, a Nernst uh, coefficient as a function of uh, nickel layer thickness. Okay, then uh, we, uh, okay, so our Nernst coefficient is uh, approximately one microvolt per Kelvin, so more than, more than one, okay, some more. And so this uh, is uh, remarkably enhanced uh, compared to, 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 to that one. Wow. And uh, as you may know, where well, anomalous nerves uh, question uh, uh, well, uh, uh, is divided into two, two contributions, as, as shown here. Okay, the first term, uh, uh, rho x alpha x y, so resistivity and so nerves conductivity. And the second term, uh, whole resistivity of x y and the zero conductivity uh, uh, alpha x x. And this is usual, normal zero effect. So well, uh, uh, we have obtained, we have evaluated, so each term and each, each quantity. Okay. And so, uh, and so uh, we have investigated uh, which, which term is donor for this in nickel platinum apparatus. And rho xy and alpha xx are shown here. And second term, this second term, rho xy alpha xx here as a function of uh, thickness then you can see this is a very, very small, negligible uh, compared to, to the total uh, nerve state uh, coefficient. Okay, so the second term is negligible, small. And rho xx is here, and so alpha xy, nerve conductivity is shown here. Then, so nerve conductivity is very large. So about four to five uh, ampere per Kelvin per meter. Okay, so this is comparable to, to those of some topological materials, such as uh, cobalt to magnetic iron. So very large uh, nearest conductivity is obtained in the platinum superadders. So what is the origin for this enhancement? It's now open question, so we don't know exactly. But well, uh, in collaboration with selections, uh, we have made uh, first principles calculations and we have calculated uh, whole conductivity and uh, uh, nearest conductivity uh, as shown here. And calculated results are also complicated and uh, with a lot of peaks and valleys and some oscillatory behavior. And so uh, we can't say anything clear, but we're uh, depending on this, uh, yeah, uh, depending on the, so Fermi level, uh, uh, the large, large anomalous, uh, large nearest conductivity may be, may be obtained. So, uh, yeah. Okay. And we 
have also tried uh, to, 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 uh, to investigate so where other, another so metric superlattice that consisting of uh, that consists of uh, cobalt two manganese garnet and aluminum nitride. So cobalt two manganese uh, manganese gallium itself shows a very large anomalous neuron spectrum. So we uh, wanted to check. Uh, so further enhancement of neuron spectrum by by merge layer. So that's why we prepare so this kind of metric superlattice. So this study was made uh, by uh, Dr. Zhang Wang. And so, well, okay, uh, skipping the detail, but this is the result. So, Nernst uh, coefficient as a function of uh, cobalt to manganese gallium thickness. Okay. Here, so we have obtained about five microvolt uh, per kelvin, so in large layers. So, this is not so large, uh, so smaller than that of uh, uh, bulk materials. Uh, but where uh, uh, we can say so where uh, uh, March layering so about single layer film shows uh, about so three uh, three point eight microvolt per kelvin so, uh, so in single layer quartz magnetic gallium film, but where March layering so we can see so the enhancement of the effect, and also we I've direct emphasized where uh, five microvolt per kelvin so this is uh, quite large uh, in. So even in polycrystalline films, so very large value was reported in, in uh, uh, single crystal or epitaxial films. But even in polycrystalline films, uh, we have obtained uh, five microvolt uh, per kelvin. So in, in by March layer, I mean, so this this type of products. So I think this is a good news. Okay, then, so where well, I would like to summarize uh, the results. So we have investigated uh, metallic superaxis, several metallic superaxis uh, from the viewpoint of uh, uh, modern uh, development of spin tronics, so spin orbitronics, spin antifilament spin tronics, and spin peritronics. And for spin orbitronics, uh, uh, in uh, platinum cobalt palladium or palladium cobalt platinum, uh, Mark layers, uh, we observed rush, but we evaluated rush, but type magnetic anisotropy contribution. Uh, and so we have found so uh, correlation between field like spin torque and perpendicular magnetic anisotropy. And for anti thermal spin tronics, uh, we have found upper iridium alloy is a promising material uh, showing a large spin hole effect and also anti thermal coupling. And for spin carotronics, uh, we have uh, found enhancement of anomalous neuron effect uh, in nickel platinum uh, superatis. And also, we have tried so cobalt to magnetic gallium aluminum nitride, much layer superatis. And so, we have a considerably large anomalous neuron effect, even for, for polycrystalline studies. Okay. And this work uh, is supported by granting aid for scientific research, uh, is, so where in Japanese, Kakenhi. So the title is a lessons of metallic superatics, uh, supported by by so JSPS and next. And next is uh Kamak Show okay, in Japanese in Japan, okay, Japanese government. Okay, thank you very much for attention. So okay, for your attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Koki, for this wonderful overview of various interesting current uh, spin topics. I really greatly appreciate and on behalf of everyone, I thank you for your Thank great you. lecture. Uh, so before we take some questions, uh, because I know during question and answer session, people will start to leave. So may I request you to stop sharing and everyone to switch on your camera if possible. And we take some screenshots, some photos, and then we will take the questions. Is that okay? Oh, I mind work. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Okay, could you please uh, stop sharing your screen? Ah, yeah, okay, uh, just a moment. Yeah, so that yeah. I can take photos, yes. Okay, so I will take some photos now. So please feel free to switch on your camera. Okay, smile. <laughs> One more. So there are 
three photos to be taken because it's not everyone coming in the same screen. All right, I think uh, we did. So many people still didn't switch on the camera, but nevertheless, uh, most of us were there. Okay, thank you. You can switch up your videos now and uh, I take the questions. Uh, I see Mohindran has a question. Mohindran, please unmute and ask. Yes, thanks very much for the interesting talk, Professor uh, Takanashi. So I have one question, probably missed the last few slides. So you say that the anomalous non nest effect in the polycrystalline samples are comparable yes. to the compare, comparable mm -hmm. to the epitaxial film. Yeah. Right. So is there any size dependence on the grain? And does it depends on the grain size? Grain size? Uh, so I, I'm wondering that what is the length, what is the length scale which controls the, the anomalous nest effect? Sorry. So you what, say, what is the length okay. scale which is important for observing ah. a large anomalous lens effect in the polycrystalline samples? I see, I see. Yeah, very good question. But uh, I don't know now. Uh, yeah, so uh, I should, we should make a so microstructure analysis for this. And yeah. So that, I see. That is, uh, yeah, future problem. Okay. So, so, you. so, so you, your point is that it is also possible to observe large ANE in polycrystalline samples. I mean, that's yes. that's what your conclusion. I I see. Yeah, yes. But but yeah, there are right. not. I guess there are not many studies in polycrystalline samples, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, well. Uh, Others, uh, please raise your hand or say that you have some questions. But uh, Koki, I request you to share your screen again because I have some questions uh, where we need to go to the slide. Okay, uh, so share the slide again. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in one of your slides, you saw that the, uh, the decay rate should be like uh, minus six power. The, I think it was the Rasma interfacial anisotropy. So, so, so uh, I, think, or? I think in the beginning when you were talking about the interfacial anisotropy, the Rasma kind of anisotropy. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you saw the dependency H one exactly. It is like uh, minus so, sorry. six. Sorry, uh, uh, it's difficult uh, to hear. Yes. Could you say? Yeah. So. Yeah, the, the, the K1 and basically decays like P to the power minus six, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, this one, so. Yeah, yeah, so um, what so is the background model, for uh, that? Sorry? What is the background sorry? for that? Background? Yeah, the mean, background. background. This I is mean, a theoretical uh, expectation. Okay, I'm sorry, okay. Mara, I don't know the details of uh, theoretical calculation. Okay. But according to the analytical model, well, uh, and of course, where uh, they assume, theoretician assume, so we're very completely flat interface. Then, okay. where uh, they expect where uh, Rashiba type uh, anisotropy uh, decays uh, with uh, a thickness minus six power, okay. that is a theoretical expe uh, expectation. I think with a simple analytical model, I think, uh, yeah. In the other system is more and more complicated, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, in, in towards the end, when you discuss about the anomalous NOx defect, so um, in, in that efficiency, uh, the how the magnetization of the ferromagnet uh, like plays a role or it doesn't play any role? A nearest yeah. effect? Yeah. So I uh, I think it well, could go one. It yes, here. Yeah, it, yeah. Depend, it, it depends on the device, I think. But what a usually magnetization has nothing to do with. OK. Yeah. So, so that means how do I choose a ferromagnet for this kind of application? What should be the criteria? Uh, well, uh, so we need, so uh, of course, we're a large neuron coefficient. Okay. Yeah, large nonce coefficient. That that is it. So essentially important. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
but we're uh, now we're uh, I think we're a uh, maximum energy coefficient. So for 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 single magnetic materials, uh, I think we're uh, less than ten microvolts per kelvin, but uh, about eight or, or something like that in topological materials. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I think Sujit Das, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, I have a question uh, regarding the antiferromagnetic spin tonics. So uh, you showed uh, the sandwich structures. Uh, uh, you use uh, chromium iridate. So my question is, uh, uh, you measure the uh -huh, spin hall yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah, you measure the spin hall effect. My question is, uh, that spin hall, hall effect also manipulated by the very curvature. The, my, my question is that, uh, what is the spin structure of this uh, of this of this material? This is a non coplanar or non collinear? Ah, you mean so? Uh, ma magnetic structure in this this separatist this layer? Yes, structure? exactly, exactly. Yes, so where uh, in, in this case where uh, I'm here. so yeah, that's a that's a good question, but uh, but. Uh, I, I believe uh, uh, one of your slides you showed uh, there is a very curvature influence these measurements of this uh, spin hall effect. I believe the spin structure should be non collinear. Uh, now I'm, I'm very curious that have you tried to measure uh, the anomalous hall effect in your systems? Uh, if it's a non coplanar or non collinear structure, then, uh, that means the anomalous hall effect will be uh, different, it will respond differently. So my interest is is if there is any measurements or uh, you, you, you what do you what do you think about this? Well, well so well, I I don't know the details now, but well, uh, so this magnetization curve so suggests we well, uh, not completely anti-ferromagnetic, so anti uh, anti parallel alignment, but where well, some probably uh, some existence of ninety degrees coupling or something or maybe some where. Well, uh, also some DMI or something like that. Or so where uh, we don't know. Okay. No, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Sujit. Uh, I do not see any other questions. I think the talk was very clear. Uh, but if anyone has questions, kindly unmute and ask. Sorry. So no, what I'm is asking, the question? No, I'm actually asking others. If they have a question, they can unmute and ask. Uh huh. Anybody, anybody has questions? Please unmute. Okay, I don't see that case. So, uh, Koki, I would like to request you to stop sharing, and I would like to share my screen to give you a small token of appreciation from our team. Um, so, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Ah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Very good. Yes. So I. This is a small. Uh, well, we are not physically meeting, so this is a digital plaque. Okay. One of appreciation from us. I will read it uh, for you. So the yeah, WQS yeah. seminar webinar series on spintronics, National yeah. Institute of Science, okay. Education and Research, Mysore, Bhubaneswar, India. Ex pleasure in uh, presenting the plaque to Professor Koki Takanasi from Institute of Material Science. Material research, Tohoku University in Japan. In recognition and appreciation for being a very valuable speaker to give a lecture on material pieces revisited. Thank you so much, uh, Koki. And I really Thank appreciate you. Um, your time and uh, you know um, to uh, give this uh, wonderful lecture to all of us. We enjoy thoroughly. And I also thank all the audience today I was very happy to see my PhD supervisor, Professor Kleeman, my longtime friend, guide, mm -hmm. and uh, other colleagues, Dale, uh, Matthias Clavi, Mohindran, and Paul Potter, many others have been there. I see many people. Thank you so much. So next week, we meet uh, for another lecture. Uh, I forgot actually who is next. Uh, uh, Pushpendra, who is next speaker? Sinova. Yeah, so Professor Jairo Sinova from um, University yes, Mines in Germany will give a talk next week. So kindly join, same time. Until then, please be safe and uh, stay happy. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Wolfgang. <laughs>